It is Wednesday, April 7th. We're going to finish up on Newton's second law, um, and we're going to do the final uh, simulation, the acceleration simulation. All right, so it's been two weeks. Have you guys been doing pretty good at keeping up with your Google Classroom and everything? I really hope so. All right, so let's do the simulation part four. So simulation part four is about acceleration. Um, so if you pull up your worksheet, um, well, I guess I should go over what acceleration is first. Acceleration is the change in speed. So when an object accelerates, either it goes faster or goes slower. So it's a change in speed. If an object doesn't change in speed, then it doesn't accelerate or decelerate. Okay. So let's look at the acceleration in the scenario one. We should have a bucket of water, and we're going to apply a constant force of 400 newtons. 400 newtons. So let's change it to a bucket. Okay. And then we should go to 400. So one, two, three, four. There we go. And as you can see, it's accelerating, and it's accelerating at 2.12 meters per second squared. That means that every second that we keep pushing it, it's going to go faster another 2.12 meters per second. Um, what's nice about the simulation is it shows you that the water is um, kind of, with its inertia, it's kind of pulling back. So you see the acceleration there. So in your worksheet, uh, I guess this one you should go OK. And then 2.12 meters per second squared. Squared is a little tricky to go to. You got to go to format, uh, text, and you put a superscript squared. Okay. The second part is what happens to the speed of the bucket. So let's go back and look at the speed of the bucket. Right? You'll notice the speed of the bucket is going faster. In other words, it is increasing. So we go there and we can highlight that. Right. The second part, while the bucket is already moving to the right, how much force is needed to keep it moving at a constant speed? So we did this before. So you see that the sliding friction is 188 this way. So what we'll probably have to do is we probably have to go to 188 because that balances out. Now we have uh, 188 push by 188 friction, right? So let's think about it. If it's already moving at 27.4 meters per second and now we have balance force, should this speed change? No, it should keep going, right? at the same speed. It's not getting any faster, it's not getting any slower. It is at the same speed, so we have a balanced force. And you'll see that the water here kind of represents that as well. So the second part is, uh, how much do we need? 188 Newtons. And what is acceleration? Well, you'll see the acceleration here is balanced. So we have zero, zero meters per second squared. So you go to format, text, superscript squared. And then what happens to the speed of the bucket? Well, you'll notice that the speed of the bucket doesn't change at all. So that this part, it stays the same. Just to highlight that. Okay, so that's the last part of the force and acceleration right there. Let's look at, let's review uh, what we kind of learned about Newton's first and second law. So these are kind of some uh, nice gifs about it. Uh, for Newton's first law, when an object is in motion, it will stay in motion. When an object is at rest, it will stay at rest. And that's really important for something like um, seat belts and airbags, because when the car stops, your body is still going to move. So we need the seat belt to prevent our body from moving. We need the airbags to prevent our body from moving and stuff like that. Uh, in Newton's second law, it's all about unbalanced forces. And when you have unbalanced forces, you have um, to pay attention to how much force is there and how much of mass is there. And so if you think about sumo wrestlers, they need a lot of mass to push each other. Uh, if you try to push against them, you wouldn't work. Uh, so if you play football and stuff like that, the linebackers are really massive. You don't want a really skinny linebacker uh, and stuff like that. Uh, here's a nice fun one with Wally. So what's happening is because he's using the fire extinguisher, he's adding a f unbalanced force. When he's adding an unbalanced force to the left, that allows him to move to the right. Um, friction is quite fun. 
um, from Fast Five, we saw how the safe had a lot of static friction, but once it's moving, it's going to keep moving and moving and moving. Um, and then there's air resistance. So here's Tom Cruise jumping out of an airplane, and there's air resistance that's going to slow him down. Credit this week, you have a couple options. Um, one of them is to make a hovercraft. You know, to do that, you need a balloon, a straw, uh, maybe a styrofoam plate, something light, and or maybe a CD if you guys don't have CDs, and some tape to put it together. Um, here's a video real quick. We're trying to make a hovercraft that will float across the table. When I release this balloon, the air will rush out creating thrust, which we are going to use to power our hovercrafts. Thrust is what we'll use to create a thin layer of air under our hovercraft. When I try to slide a foam plate on the table, it doesn't go very far because there's too much friction. Let's see what happens when we add our balloon. The air is going to go through the straw and help our hovercraft float. This is a way of reducing friction, so the plate glides nicely across the table. I am going to test my hovercraft. There it goes! It works! Fidget spinner, um, even with things from around your house. So you can make a fidget spinner out of Lego pieces if you make it out of other things like from the ball bearings of a um, skateboard, you can do that. But simpler things would be like Lego pieces. So let me show you a video real quick. So it's interesting to see the times. So I think it's time to wrap up these Lego fidget spinners and do a time trial for all of the ones that I've done so far. I wonder which one will actually spin the longest. Well, I certainly have made a few Lego fidget spinners over the last few months. So we'll go ahead and we'll do some time trials on all of them in the next video. So which is your favorite Lego fidget spinner? And which one do you think will actually be the best Lego fidget spinner ever?